Right, how about, tune your horns up. All right, the more the more that you put on the fire, the hotter that fire be. That's that's your amen. I know you do in your car, and we appreciate that. And uh, I can't hear you sitting in your car, uh, but you can also tune in to eighty-seven point nine on your FM dial, eighty-seven point nine, and you can hear it inside your car. Okay, so uh, remember that. Boy, it's good to see this good crowd here this morning. Thank you for being out in the Lord's house. How many believe Jesus is coming? Hallelujah. I believe it could be today. Amen. Now, I normally say this a lot of times in service. Now, everybody smile real big where I can see you. Everybody. You smile. Even those that didn't worry you partial. Now say amen to that. Amen. All right. But it's, we thank you for being here. Let me make a few announcements right quickly. Uh, we won't get to Usher. He's ready uh, to come around to the, uh, to the vehicles, take up our morning tithes and offering. Uh, we want to say we appreciate the faithfulness of God's people. Uh, appreciate you uh, that have been faithful to these services. Uh, even when we don't get to have the drive-in service for you tuning in, it is very important that you comment. It lets me know you're listening. And I know you don't have to give, be accountable to me. I understand that. But it sure does help your pastor. Okay? Also, uh, well, I had something on my mind. Oh, on the, uh, on the liking of our videos on Facebook Live, uh, on our website, and on our YouTube page. We need everybody that can to go to the well uh, the YouTube page. It's going home, FWB Church. Uh, we need you to go on there and subscribe to the YouTube channel. When you do that, if we get 100 subscribers, we can live stream for free on YouTube, but only until we get 100 subscribers. So you say, well, how many have subscribed? Lift your hand out your car. How many subscribe? So those that haven't, we'd like to encourage you to subscribe to it. Uh, if you can make an extra post uh, or tell your friends, uh, you say, well, I've got friends that won't listen to it. Well, tell them to subscribe to it anyway. <laughs> subscribe, to, subscribe to it anyway, amen. I'm getting tongue-tied already. I can imagine what later on is going to be. But anyway, uh, do that if you will. How's the sound up there? Doing good? All right. Uh, let's see. We've got another announcement that I need to make. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord's blessing on the offering. Uh, we want to say I appreciate uh, Brother Travis for his uh, devotions on Sunday morning at 945. Uh, Sister Liz does the primary class at 1015. I noticed some of you folks have, have done a personal page on on your class, I think Miss Brenda has done that. Who all's done that? Uh, I know you and Chris have, hadn't you? Uh, on the um, Sunday school, uh, so we appreciate you doing that. God bless you for that. Uh, now we can do uh, if you want to continue that. That'll be fine, Amen. But we we do miss Sunday school. Uh, how, how many love Sunday school? Amen. I, I, hey, Sunday school is very important. And, uh, but I'm not getting into all of that. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we ask God you bless the remainder, God, of this service. God, I pray that you'd encourage, God, those that are discouraged. Strengthen, God, those that are weak today. Lord, most of all, if there's one lost, backslidden, unconcerned, unfaithful, God, those listening by social media, God, I ask in Jesus' name to speak to their heart. God, and if there's lost, I ask, dear God, that your Holy Ghost conviction, God, will grip their soul. God, speak to their heart. Lord, where they'll be able to call upon you. Lord, those that's following afar off. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, that they'd move closer, God. Get back into the fold. Now, Lord, I pray, dear Father, that you'd touch this offering today. Bless the gift. Lord, bless the giver. Thank you, God, for each one that's been faithful, Lord, in attendance. Uh, God, whether it's been in this drive-in service, whether it's been, dear Lord, on following on the, on the social media. Lord, I thank you for that. Those that's been faithful, give him. Lord, we just ask you continue to bless. Touch our nation. 
Lord, that is stooped in sin. Lord, touch God this uh, uh, pandemic. Touch God this virus. Touch our leaders. God, from our president, dear God, uh, to our uh, highest government, to our local government, God, we ask your blessings, and God, you'd guide them. You'd direct them. Lord, dear Lord, you said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So we know the opposite of that would be cursed is the nation whose God is not the Lord. God, help us to recognize you today. Lord, encourage your people. We love you. And all God's people said, Amen. that means toot your horn. There you go. All right, brother, he's coming around with the offering plate. Amen. Uh, hold your hand out. Let him know you got something to give. I get joy, joy, joy when I think about the Lord. When I'm standing in his presence, I say, Lord, give me more. It starts moving in my hand. happy in the Lord this morning. You feel good in Jesus? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that the joy of the Lord comes along with it? How many thankful you got something you can feel? My, my. Listen to the word. You know what we're going through today, we don't need to let steal our joy. Amen. We may be in a battle. Amen. But thank God we have peace in heart. I thank God I laid down last night and slept like a baby. How, how you do that, preacher? Amen. Knowing your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Listen to the words, not the way we sing it. God's children were in battle in the burning desert sand. When Moses heard the voice of God, he said, lift up your hand. Though he grew so tired.
coming soon. I, I'm just trying to be led of the Spirit this morning, so you pray for us when we try this, and I'm pulling things on them. Hallelujah. Way back in the Bible days, Noah told the people, said it's gonna rain. They didn't listen, no, they paid him no mind. And when the rain came, they were left behind. I tell you, it's, it's gonna rain. Get ready, it's gonna rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind Cause God showed Noah, showed him the rainbow sign He said it won't be water but fire the next time Well, they tell me when the water began to fall 
they knocked on the window, they knocked on the door, they didn't know exactly what to do. Now you don't want this to happen to you. I tell you, it's, it's gonna rain. Get ready, it's, it's gonna rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind. Cause God showed Noah, showed him the rainbow sign. He said it won't be water, but fire the next time. Well, they tell me when they put Jesus in the grave, he rose again on the third day. He said, I am the Son of God, and I'm coming back to take you where no man trod. It's gonna rain, get ready, it's gonna rain, you better get ready, and bear this in mind, cause God showed Noah, showed him the rainbow sign, he said it won't be water, but fire the next time. Hallelujah, alright. Anything else all you ladies got on your mind? Alright. Praise the Lord for that. I'm enjoyed the singing. Well, let's say this. I'm enjoyed the ladies singing. Amen. Have you got your Bibles this morning? Amen. Left them outside your car. Amen. Sven, you can't take a picture, do you, can you? Hallelujah. Let's give God a good wave offering with the Holy Scripture. I tell you what, leave them there. Ain't you got your phone? She don't have her phone neither. All right, you let them down. Bear your flesh. Love your Bible. Never be ashamed of the Word of God. Hallelujah. I desire your prayers. I'm off. I was off. I desire your prayers. Amen this morning. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to have to shed this jacket. 1 First Corinthians chapter 15, amen, and you're hearing this morning, amen, let's ask the Lord's blessings, amen, upon the reading of the scripture. Brother Travis Guffey, you're on the back of your truck over there, amen, would you bless the reading of the scripture? Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. All right. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's look at verse 51. You've, hear, you've heard this uh, verse of scripture no doubt many times, but here's what the Lord's laid upon our heart. I don't know if we're going to preach or we're just going to, amen, give a study this morning. Just got some things, amen, that you'll, you'll pray for us. 51, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Aren't you thankful to this morning that we have victory in the Lord? Hallelujah. As I began to ask God to show us what we needed to preach in this service today, God began dealing with my heart. I'm just going to pray for the preacher. Just by introduction this morning, Paul, amen, was writing to the church here in verse number 51 through 53 especially, amen, that we find, he said, I show you a mystery. He said, we shall not all sleep, amen, but we shall all be changed. 
here in our hearing this morning, this was one of Paul's revelations. I mean, all well, he was saying, all will die. And we, uh, he's saying all will die physically, but some's going to be changed. Amen. Uh, now you say, preacher, we're all going to be changed, but there's some, amen's going to have to go by the way of the grave. And that's where he said there in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Listen, uh, as we gather this morning, how many believe Jesus is coming? All right, I'm going to ask you that again. That's a simple question, and you hear me say it all the time, but how many really believe Jesus is coming? Amen. If we really believe that this morning, amen, as we are gathering today, America and this world, they're scrambling, amen, to cope with one of the greatest disasters, amen, in the world history. You say, preacher, what is that? This is one of the greatest disasters, amen, in world history. There's things that's taking place this morning, Amen. This invisible enemy has invaded our world. Thousands have died. Amen. One of the greatest economies in the world's history has collapsed. I mean, it's hanging by a thread. You've heard me say that recently. Just bear with me. Amen. America is suffering emotionally. Amen. And financially. I mean, listen, there's more, there's more child molestations, amen, right now. Amen, listen, it's on the rise because people are at home. Amen, because the, uh, the, the ABC stores are not closed. Amen, can I get a witness there? Amen, and listen, we, we're, in, uh, hey, we're in a bad shape. And, and Now listen, I'm going to say some things you may agree with. Amen, you may disagree with, but I'm going to tell you something. Amen, it's, it's, it, we're too far gone. Amen, listen, I one of these days I'm going to stand before an almighty God. Amen. I'm going to give an account for what I preach. Amen. So, amen. If you don't like what I say, you take it up with God. Can I get a witness sign? Amen. Listen, the fake news network is piping fear. Amen. And terror into the hearts of American people. Amen. Give me a witness. Give me a witness. Hey, why? Because, listen, the end is coming. Why? Amen. Is, why is this fake news piping t f uh, fear and terror? I tell you why. Amen. Jesus is on his way. And here's another reason why. They hate Donald Trump. I ain't trying to get political this morning. Hey Amen. But listen, hey, and they want this thing. They want to create chaos. They want to create confusion. Hey Amen. To, to reign all the way until the November election. Thank you. Some are wanting to know what are the signs, preacher, of his coming. What are the signs of Jesus coming back? I mean, why is it important to believe, amen, in the rapture? Or, or, or why not to believe in the rapture? Hebrews 9, 28, So Christ was once offered to bear of the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Did you notice that terminology? Amen. Them that look for for him, Amen. What uh, to appear this second? Hey, hey, shall he appear this second time? Let me just say this: If you're not looking for him, Amen, you're not going to be go with him, Amen. If you're not looking for him, you're not going with him when he comes. Luke twenty one thirty six. Watch ye therefore and pray always, Amen, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Hey, he's telling us to watch. Let me tell you something, church. We better, hey, have our eyes lifted up. We better have our eyes on the Lord. Hey, man, Jesus is on his way. He said to be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Hey, let me tell you something. We got some stuff coming on this nation, coming on this world. Hey, man, I'll get to that in a minute. When the church leaves this world, there'll be a seven-year period called of the tribulation. Can I get a witness there? Amen. The first three and a half years, amen, it's called tribulation. Amen. Some of it call it, some call it peace. That's the peaceable years. Amen. The second half, amen, with three and a half years, it'll be the great tribulation. I'm talking about all the anguish, all the sorrow, all the suffering. I'm talking about incomprehensible devastation. Amen. Will wrap around this world. In Revelation chapter 9, it says that a third part of the earth's population is going to be killed. Can I get a witness there? Amen. The Bible talks about the seals. It talks about the trumpets. It talks about the vials. 
In chapter number 16, the vials. I mean, I'm talking about such anguish that the world has never seen before. The, coronas, the coronavirus is nothing compared of the devastation that's coming on America. You say, but preacher, it could get worse. Preacher, you saying this is a, a sign of the time. I believe, listen, I don't believe it. Hey, I don't believe it. I believe Jesus could come back today. How many believe that? Amen. But I'm going to say, amen, by the help of the Lord. There's two comings, amen, of the Lord. The first coming, amen, He's coming as a thief in the night. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about could it happen? And by the way, that could happen at any time. There's nothing left, amen, in this precious Word of God, amen, that has to happen. I mean, believe Jesus, amen, He could come. I'm talking about right now. I mean, believe, amen, He could come in the clouds of glory. You say, preacher, He can't come. There ain't no clouds. Well, there's one. Amen. And by the way, there don't have to be a cloud. I'm still cutting off. Amen. That don't have to be a cloud. Amen. You say, why? Because when he comes, he'll bring a cloud with him. Can I get a witness there? I was saying, amen, this morning. Amen. Fear has gripped our country. It has gripped our land. Am I still as loud? Amen. All right, listen. I mean, nothing left to happen. He said he's a coming as a thief in the night. You think this has got people's attention? I believe it has some. But you know what? If Jesus was to, turn, to return right now, there would still be people. Amen. You listen to this, preacher. There'd still be people, amen, being caught off guard as Christ coming as a thief in the night. I mean, man, I'm talking about the devastation that's in our country right now. And people are sitting back. And they ain't got the coming of the Lord on their mind. They don't have the coming of the Lord, amen, in their thoughts. I mean, listen, the second coming, amen, of Christ will be after the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen, when Christ returns to the city of Jerusalem to establish His eternal kingdom that will never end. The seven years of tribulation will make this coronavirus look like a picnic. Did you hear what I said? Do you listen to this preacher? Amen. Thirdly, let me say, Jesus will return to Israel, to the Mount of Olives. Amen. I'm trying to tell you that Jesus is coming. Amen. Jesus is going to return to Israel. Amen. To the Mount of Olives where He'll crush the armies. He'll defeat the armies that will, amen, come to, against, amen, Israel. That will come to torment Israel. Amen. In this battle, the blood is going to run to the, uh, to the horse's bridle. Can I get a witness there? I mean, it's going to be, it's, hey, it's God's payday for every anti-Semitic nation that has ever been hateful, that has ever been an enemy to the Jewish nation. Let me just say this, amen. You better keep Israel in your first priority. Amen as a nation. Can I get a witness there? That is God's chosen people. Amen. Oh, I'll get a little bit further along. Now I'll, I'll hit that again in just a minute. If you think what happened, amen, and God did to Pharaoh as he pursued the Jewish people, him the Exodus was outstanding. What God is about to do, amen, will hold no candle to what happened to the plagues and what happened, amen, to Pharaoh in the Exodus. Can I get a witness there? We better get our heads up out of the sand. We better get our hearts, amen, and our minds back in the book. Fourthly, let me say, Jesus, as the Son of David, will sit upon the throne when He comes the second time in the city of Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. He will establish the kingdom that will never pass away. And all these things are on the verge of happening. Are you with me, church? How many believe that all these things is on the verge of happening? Somebody say, well, I don't believe. I don't believe the second coming. Or I don't believe the first coming like you do. I don't believe the tribulation like you do. Well, first of all, let me just say this. John, amen, on the Isle of Patmos, amen, in chapter number 4, he said, I heard a voice say, come up hither. Hallelujah. I'm just going to give you my opinion right here. But I believe that's a symbolic thing, amen, of the rapture of the church. I'm going to tell you something, friend. You say, preacher, what's he going to say when he comes, Sister Faye? It could be the words, come up hither. Amen. John heard those words, didn't he? And God was giving him, amen, things, amen, to come. All God's people said... All 
I'm saying is this. You say, but I don't believe it the way you do. I believe we're going to have to face the mark of the beast. I believe we're going to have to face of being chipped and all this stuff. I'll just say this. If you don't believe, amen, that we're gone before this stuff, amen, let me just say that God's a merciful God. And if you don't believe that, that means that Jesus couldn't come right now. I ain't got a mark, Brother Keith. Amen. I don't have 666 in my forehead or my hand. Oh, God, people said. So if you believe, amen, we're going to go through that, and you, that means that you don't believe Jesus could return in the clouds of glory as I speak. Well, I got news for you. He could return now. There's nothing left, amen, prophetically. Amen. For, I need help this morning. Nothing left, amen, that has to take place, amen, in this Word of God. Jesus is coming, and it's on the verge, amen, of happening. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. Bible says, for, God himself, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You listen to this preacher. Of the Lord Himself. Buddha ain't coming after me. Harry Krishna ain't coming after me. David Shurek ain't coming after me. I need help. The Bible says the Lord Himself. Hallelujah. I thank God I've got a Savior. He's still on the throne. Hallelujah. I've got a kid, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Lord Himself. Amen. What did He say? Shall descend from heaven. Jesus is coming. Can anybody get excited over it? Coming to the Lord this morning. My, my, my. I don't know about you. I can pray, come quickly. Lord Jesus, amen. He said he's coming with a shout. Preacher, what's a shout? That shout is a shout of victory. You say, what is he out of victory over? Let me tell you something. You know what? That shout's going to represent victory. Amen. That he's receiving the body of Christ. Hallelujah. He's receiving the body of Christ. How many glad you saved this morning? Hallelujah. And the Lord himself, amen, is going to come with a shout, with the voice. Hey, glory to God. How, then he stops there and he says, There, descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Preacher, what's the trump of God? Trumpets announce royalty. Now, some of you should have tooted your horn over that. Trumpets, amen, listen, they announce royalty. In other words, amen, the trump of God, the King of kings. The Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, Amen, Amen. It's announcing that royalty, Hallelujah, royalty, Amen, is coming, Hallelujah. Then the Bible says there, Oh, I like what it says, and it said the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. First Thessalonians four seventeen through eighteen. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hey, let me tell you something. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Hallelujah. Ain't no grave. I'm telling you, hallelujah. The dead. Well, I'm about to get excited this morning. Of the dead in Christ shall rise for her. What do you mean in Christ? Lord, he said those which are alive and remain. That don't mean alive physically. That means alive spiritually. You better hope you're alive. You better know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Those which are alive spiritually and remain shall be called up. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, church, amen, don't do it. Hey, be not dismayed. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Are you ready to meet Him? Hey, Amen. Is your family ready to meet Him? He said uh, to be called up together with, the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You know what that ought to do? Knowing that Jesus could come right now. I wonder how many cars would be empty and how many would still be sitting there wondering who, what's going on. I hope and pray everybody here is saved. But there's one thing about it. I don't know your heart. Amen. Only God knows your heart. 
He knows what you did last night. He knew what you did two days ago and past past week. I wonder if God, amen, could take a big old projector and screen this morning and, and put it up and everybody sitting in this parking lot, he could show, amen, the last two weeks of your life. I wonder if you would be ashamed, amen, what, what he would pull up in the last two weeks of your life. You said, preacher, I, but God won't do that. You know why? That's a merciful God. But hey, that's what's going to happen. Hey man, when we stand before God. Hey man, on judgment day. Hey man, listen, if you're a sinner, you know what's going to happen? Hey man, God's going to show you your sin. He's going to show you your... Can I get a witness there? He's going to show you your wickedness. Hey man, and you will give an account. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that He is God. It ought to be a comfort to know the Lord Jesus. Is coming. Hallelujah. How many can pray with the preacher, Come quickly, Lord Jesus? How many would welcome his coming this morning? I could welcome his coming today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, listen this morning. Should be a comfort. Well, preacher, nothing like that has ever happened like that before. There ain't never been no rapture take place before. Well, let me just stop right there. Yes, it has. Preacher? Listen, rapture ain't in the Bible as far as a rapture, the word rapture. But rapture means a great taking away. Amen? So you say, preacher, ain't nothing like that happened before. Sure it has. How many remember Enoch in the Word of God? The Bible says he was. And he was not. You know why? He walked with God. You know what God allowed him to do? He allowed Enoch to walk right on into heaven. Walked right on into his presence. What about Elijah? Hey Amen. What about Elijah? Hey Amen. The whirlwind of fire came down. Hallelujah. I mean, he didn't taste death. Hey Amen. Glory to God. And they took him right on into glory. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Enoch and Elijah is a type of the rapture. I'm telling you, friend, Jesus is coming. Hey, the rapture is going to take place. And we're going to be with the Lord. We ought to shout amen right there and give the Lord the glory. The rapture is near. How many believe that? The Antichrist is near. We have the spirit of Antichrist now. All God people said, we have the spirit of Antichrist now. You say, preacher, is Antichrist on the scene now? Hey, I don't know if he's born or not. Hey, amen. But I'll just say this. He ain't made himself clear yet. Now say Amen. Preacher, you saying now, preacher, you saying he's here? I ain't saying that, but I ain't saying he ain't either. All God people said, "Amen." God knows how close this thing is, and all this is coming down the road. Jesus is coming. People will have two options. Amen. When the Antichrist, Amen, gets on the scene, Amen, in the in the tribulation period, they'll have two options. First of all, you'll either take his number and lose their soul. Can I get a witness? Amen. Or you'll die a martyr and you'll be beheaded for Christ. You say, preacher, I'll wait till that time. What's the chances? What's the chances? Amen. That you'll take the torture and you'll take, amen, you'll take the suffering. You'll take the pain and you'll take the devastation in your heart. Amen. And on your physical body. I'll just give my life for Jesus. What's the chances that you, you, you and your family, amen, going through that period and you, you, your families are starving to death and your children are starving to death and your babies don't have no formula and it's going to take a mark, amen, before you can go to the grocery store and get them, amen, some formula. I mean, what is the chances, amen, you're going to give your life? I tell you what, I wouldn't take my chances. I'd get right today. Hey, the Bible says the day is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Can I get a witness this morning? Need to get right now. What are the signs of His coming, preacher? I might give you one. i tell you what one sign we've already witnessed as a nation was the birth of Israel. Somebody witness right there. The birth of Israel, May 15th, 1948. 
What do you mean, preacher? They became a nation. Psalm 102, verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Let me tell you something. God in hey, 1948 began, listen, it's always been God's chosen people, but God, even, amen, stepped it up a notch and began to bless, amen, Israel, amen. I'm telling you, I, I believe, glory to God. Now, you can disagree with me if you want to, but I believe that Israel is God's time clock, amen. Oh, yeah, church, Israel is God's time clock, amen. When they're in the land, amen, the clocks are running, amen. But when they're out of the land, the clock is stopped. Amen. And when they get back in the land, the clock is running. I tell you, amen, that's your central focal point. Amen. In the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness there? Ezekiel chapter 37, you find the valley of dry bones. Verse number 11, he said, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Now, some preachers and theologians saying that that's, says that's the church. Whoa, that's not the church. Amen, it's exactly what he said it was. He said, amen, those dry bones. In verse 11, chapter 37, amen, of Ezekiel, he said, amen, that those dry bones was the whole house of Israel. And what happened? He breathed, glory to God, he breathed life into them. Amen. He prophesied to the wind. Amen. Sinews, flesh came upon those bones. And they stood up an exceeding great army. You know why? They were alive and they're well. Can I get a witness right there? <laughs> I'm saying this morning, Ezekiel 37, 14, shall put my, and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Now here's where you might fall out with me. If you do, that's all right. I still love you. I still love the Lord. I ain't trying to be political, but the truth will set you free. Thank you. Donald Trump. That's got your attention. Amen. Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel. Barack Obama didn't do that. George W. Bush didn't do that. Clinton didn't do that. You need to get on board with the preacher this morning. Amen. He recognized Jerusalem. Oh, amen. Obama said he was going to do it. Amen. Bush said he was going to do it. Boy, I'm about to get excited. Amen. Amen. But Donald Trump, I ain't saying he's a man of God. I'm saying, hey, hey, it's between him and the Lord. But he recognized Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel. Not only that, secondly, he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That was historic and that was prophetic. Amen. Whether you like it or not, and all the liberal media, I guarantee you they won't show that. Thirdly, he recognized the Golan Heights as the sovereign property of Israel. Some of you are getting on board. Fourthly, President Trump crushed Iran's nuclear deal <laughs> which denied Israel's dream of creating a nuclear bomb that would wipe Israel off the map. Huh? It also gave America greater national security. Now, can anybody get on board that? Yeah. Because let me just say this, Iran and Russia are not and do not have America's best interest in heart. Our president, Donald Trump, hey, I ain't up here uplifted him, but I'm going to say this. 
Hey, man, I'm 52 years old. I've sat through a few of them. Hey, man, but uh, President Donald Trump has done more to bless Israel than all the other presidents have done in my lifetime. In my lifetime. Hey, man, one made the comment that he's done more to bless to bless Israel. Hey, man, to, hey, hey, man, than all the presidents back to 1948. And I'd about say amen to that. Hey, he's, hey, and you say, and we want to run him down. And we want to blame him for this. I'm going to tell you something. You better thank God. He said, blessed are they that bless them. And cursed are they that curse them. You better bless Israel. Amen. You better, you better have Israel in our prayers. Can I get a witness there? Oh, and by the way, before Donald Trump got it, I'll say this, the last administration, they were against Israel. Look at the policies they put in store, put, to, put in place, amen. Boy, it gets quiet when you talk about it, but I said you fall out with me, but the truth will set you free, amen. You better come see if they cut me off Facebook yet, amen. Hallelujah. God bless, has blessed Israel. He'll bless them that bless Israel or He'll curse them that curse Israel. I guess if I had a title for the message this morning it would be this. Ready or not, here He comes. Ready or not, here He comes. Let me say this. How many have ever played hide and seek? First of all, you can't play hide and seek with God. Because you can't never hide from him. But as a little boy and girl, amen, growing up, you played hide and seek. You, you'll let somebody be the counter, you'll go hide. Amen, they'll count, amen. They get done counting. Ready or not, here I come. And you know what? I believe God's a sounding out through this nation and through this world. I believe he's a sounding out. Ready or not, here I come. Hey, you saying, preacher, let me just say this this morning. I'll close. Angie, play me something, if you will. Amen. Listen, the day, I said it, the day is the day of salvation. And He's a coming whether you're ready or whether you're not. Amen. Are you ready? I mentioned the seals. I mentioned the seals a while ago. I mentioned the trumpets. I mentioned the vials that are going to be poured out upon this earth. I said the coronavirus has nothing. I'll just mention a few of the vials. In Revelation 16, the first vial that God allowed the angel to pour Upon the earth, the Bible says, there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. A grievous sore. Hey, I believe, now you listen. The Bible says in verse number three, the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. I want you to get a picture of this. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. And they became as blood. So here was a noisome sore. Here, amen, the, the sea became blood. The rivers and the fountains of waters became blood. I'm talking about here you are in this noisome sore. And you're trying to get relief from that. And you run to your water spigot. Amen, you turn on your water spigot and it's blood. Hey, you run to the rivers, amen, and it's blood. The Bible says in the verse number 8, the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and scorched men with fire. Well, wait a minute. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. Now here was an awesome sore. Here was the waters turned to blood. I mean, now, amen, he, tur he turns the heat up on the sun and to scorch men. Hey, did you hear what he said? Did, did you hear what the Bible said right there? And it said there, which hath power over the plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. The Bible says they blasphemed the name 
uh, hey, blaspheme the, uh, the name of God. Why? Hey. <laughs> I'm telling you something, friend. Bible says in the verse number 12, verse 10, the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. Can you imagine? Water, blood, noisome sore. I mean, hey, hey, all of a sudden, amen, score. You want to go to the beach, lay out in the sun? Hey, you can go, hey, you know what? Hey, man, you can go to the, the deepest cellar you can get into. Hey, man, you know what I believe? I believe the sun would still scorch you because it's the Word of God. And they still didn't recognize God. They blasphemed God. And they repented not. And the Bible says, amen, upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And they repented not of their deeds. And you think you're going to give your heart and life? You think you're going to die as a martyr? You know what you'll be doing? You'll be a blaspheming God. Can I get a witness there? Hey, you won't repent. The Bible says they didn't repent over all that. Amen. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. You know what's going to happen there? He dried up you, Euphrates. You know what's going to happen there? That's the battle of Armageddon. Dried it up. You listen, that's where, that's where, they, man, the blood's going to, hey, it's going to run to the bits and bridle of the horses. How many believe this? The seventh file. I ain't got time to get over it all. You take time, read chapter 16. Verse 17, the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. It is done. Preacher, I'm not right. I'd like for every head to be bowed if you would. Every eye closed. I'm going to close. God knows why He wanted me to preach this this morning. Maybe it's just to give you a little bit of history and a little bit of, hey man, uh, I'm telling you, friend, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you say, preacher, how do I know God's dealing with me? I'll tell you how I know God's dealt with me. It felt like my heart was about to beat out of my chest. I was so uncomfortable. I mean, man, I was so irritated. Couldn't wait. Oh, you say, but preacher, I'm here and I'll wait till the night service. Let me tell you something, friend. We may not have this evening service. Jesus could come. I want you to just say this morning, by every head bowed, every eye closed. I wonder if there's one. Hey, man, would say, preacher. Hey, man, I want to say, preacher, I know God spoke to my heart. I know God spoke to my heart and I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready for the coming of the Lord. Uh, there's things I got to get straight. There's things I got to repent of. Uh, there's things, and God has shown me this morning that, hey, that if I should die, heaven would not be my home. Now, just me and the Lord looking around. I wonder if you've got your windows rolled up. That's okay. You can turn your lights on, blink your lights at me. Or maybe you can lift your hand and say, Preacher, I, I'm not right with God. If God spoke to me this morning. Would you pray with me? Would you pray for me? Just lift your hand or blink your eyes and make sure I see you. Preacher, preacher, God spoke to me. I'm not right with God. I'm not where I ought to be of God. All right, I wonder if there's one this morning to say, Preacher, I'm saved. I'm ready to die. I know my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. But God has stirred my heart this morning. God has stirred my soul today. And it's got me to recap my life. And preacher, this has helped me this morning. 
just to be reminded of how close the coming of the Lord is. Just lift your hand. Lift your hand. Bless those hands. Bless all those hands. Bless those hands. All right, this morning, one more chance, and I'm going to let them sing a song during this. If you want this preacher to come to your car and pray with you, like I visit earlier, we'll, we'll still social distance. If you'd like this preacher, maybe maybe you're saved, it ain't saying you're lost. Maybe you got lost family members. Maybe you got lost husbands, lost wives. Uh, I'm talking about children that you'd like for God to save. And they'd get a hold of this message this morning. You on Facebook, the same way. Listen, if you want me to come to your car and pray with you, amen, just lift your hand. I'll come and I'll pray at your vehicle. And we'll, we'll just pray together, amen. We'll just, we'll just get in touch with God. He said we're two or three. He said we're two, amen, or touching anything. So let's just obey the Lord. If you want me to pray, amen, we'll come to your, we'll come to your car. Just lift your hand.
Father, I love you. I thank you, God, for the service today. The souls, God, that you've touched and you've helped. God, all of those that are listening, God, through this community, they may we may not see them, but they, God, they hear us. God, I pray those that are on Facebook, social media, encourage their hearts. Help them know, dear God, we love them. God, if they've been changed in their heart and their life, they'll respond to us, dear Lord. They may not want to do that publicly, but God, help them do it privately, Lord. Help them know we're here to help them. Now, Lord, encourage your people and bless our service this evening. And all God's people said, All right, enjoy being in the Lord's house. Hallelujah. All right, church, we love you and thank you for coming. Remember this evening, let's everybody be back. If you miss this evening, you'll miss a blessing, all right? You're at liberty to go. Who's going to help them out? Miss Brother Stacey. Adam's going to guide you out one at a time, okay? So you pay attention, Brother Adam and Brother Stacy. Amen.